What's up YouTube, I'm Kat Kirikat and today I want to talk about um, the journey of creating the a link between world style meter mod for Twilight Princess. Um, so if you if you might not know by now it's uh, I made the mod using uh, Twilight Princess decompilation. The it's a decompilation basically like from my understanding basically like when you take the source code and you you know like you you um, I guess like you decrypt it, decompress it, whatever. So it's like in a human readable form, so like C++. So you make it go from ASM to C++, stuff like that. So you can actually like, C++ programmers can understand what's going on for the most part, mainly, um, usually, and then, you know, they can modify it. So anyways, um, more easily. So I want to talk about my journey um, of creating the link between world style meter mod. No, uh, this mod this, this wasn't actually my first um, experience jumping into, jumping into, um, you know, making a, a mod for Totpins by modifying the source code. I actually uh, made another mod that I never, I never showed on YouTube, at least yet. Anyways, I might show in the future if I if I work on it more. Um, I, but anyways, I worked on another mod where I modified the shield. Um, to make it so Link doesn't have to, so Link doesn't automatically take the shield out and aim it when he Z targets. Now I, I know um, Twelve Prince Three Event already does does this technically. Uh, yeah, it does does this do this, but um, it also adds other features that I'm not interested in as much, like uh, enemies taking extra damage, I think, and stuff like that, or you know, extra damage to kill, stuff like that. Um, and the person I was only mainly interested in the shield edition so being able to add the addition myself w without needing to deal with the other features of that mod um it, it was great like for me although i wasn't able to like add it fully like some features i didn't try to understand how to add myself so I, I never yeah um but anyways after my experience with that mod um making it uh, i start by the way i start working with weapons to completion and like around the end of January, like January 26, maybe something like that, and um, yeah, I um, I started working on the shield mod like sometime around that, like, and yeah, um, after I made the shield mod, eventually, like I finished it, maybe like the main parts of it, I finished like in February by February 1st um, of 2023. So afterwards, um, there wasn't really much modding activity I, I remember having was 12 points to completion and um, by March 31st if I recall correctly um, in the in the Kirby Mummy server which is a discord server for for the 12 points co-op mod which is made I think by using AR code stuff like that and um, it's it's actually a pretty neat mod in my opinion but um, anyways in that server um, I was showcasing my shield mod and like glitches that happened uh, that, that I accidentally made happen while working while modifying the source code of the game for the shield mod and uh, <laughs> while I was showing some clips and stuff and um, someone mentioned like um, out of, it was kind of like out of nowhere he mentioned like make him meter mod for 12 princess and that that was basically how uh, I started working on the a link between world style meter so um while we were talking about it, um, I was like, you know what, what um, instead of just making like a generic kind of meter thing, I mean, it's not, it's not exactly generic, because it's not like 12 Prince has a meter necessarily, so, but I was like, instead of just making a meter mod, why don't I try making a meter that's like, more unique, you know, so it's like one that's, so the link between worlds meter was a unique I guess gimmick or mechanics that intended to uh, a, a unique approach that Nintendo took to the meter ID. Um, some people call it the energy meter. I think I prefer that. I'll I'll call it like energy meter for now. Um, but uh, yeah. Um, so it was a neat idea, and 
So I was like, if the if the lantern meter is decompiled in the twelve points decompilation, then uh, in twelve points decomp, then I'll be able to modify it to um, I'll be able to modify the meter so it doesn't only affect the lantern; it affects other items as well. Um, so then, to effectively act like an energy meter, um, the thing is, <laughs> and this is funny by the way, it's uh, the coincidence is so good because. The 12 points decom- wait, uh, okay, so I'll get to it. The thing is, in my 12 points decompilation repos I, that I, like, installed to my device, or, yeah, like, I built and stuff, um, it, it didn't have the D meter, it didn't have the move Cantara function, which is a function, f- the, one of the main functions for the lantern meter decompiled, it didn't have it decompiled, so, um, I was like, no, why isn't it not decompiled? But then, uh, when I looked at the updated one, because that one that I had was from January, because I told you like uh, earlier that I downloaded it in uh, Jan- the end of January. So then, uh, so when we had this conversation about uh, adding a meter mod twelve point test was during the end of March, March first. first. So then, um, I looked at the twelve point decompilation uh, repository in GitHub, and it turns out that they actually like de- decompiled that function after January like after I had uh, built it in 2023 which is such a it feels like such a big coincidence because um because it, this the completion project started all the way back like on maybe 2020 2019 maybe even earlier I'm not sure but somewhere around that time I think and the coincidence is so great that I don't. I first used the completion, like seriously used it, and modified content of it during Jan January. But then after that, at some point, the meter function for the lantern actually got decompiled. So that was neat that that happened. So it's such a big coincidence. Um, but yeah, because of that, I was able to start working on the mod. If that wasn't decompiled, I probably wouldn't have been able. To get that far in the mod maybe i could use the maybe i could have used the oxygen meter or some other meter but i don't know i just um so i'm happy that got decompiled by the time that we got the id so anyways um so in, in april 1st <laughs> i know april 1st whatever in april 1st i uh downloaded the repository again and they re like reset it up and stuff like that um I still have the shield repository with me because I don't want to lose that like phone expand on it uh, in the future but so now I have like two separate repositories for 12 prints one which has the meter mod and one which has the shield mod so anyways um so then I started um, I started working on it and the first thing I did was uh, UI stuff like I modified the lantern so it would uh, so first I, I made it so it would appear like each icon, like every icon, or like most icons that I I, I was um, hoping to yeah, make the meter effect, the energy meter effect. But um, then someone mentioned, or maybe I just thought about it myself, that it was kind of like a weird idea to make um, every single item have the same meter with the same lens, stuff like that, because they're all going to be consuming the same meter and... So when when the meter is low, it's going to be low for all of them basically. So it was kind of like not a neat, not a good idea to just put that there, especially since the meter um, already appears in the UI, like the me- big meters. Why do I need the small one? So uh, I decided to remove that later, like um, soon after I add that basically, and um, instead I worked on um, stuff like making the meter UI um, for the lantern appear most like through like most of the major mini game related uh like through most of the major gameplay related events so like for example you know like when you're playing the game and you're not equipping any items then the lantern meter will always be open no matter what um unless you pause the game or you go to to the item select screen then it will like fade away stuff like that um initially well i'll, I'll get to this later towards maybe the end because but anyways um so I, I did that. I made made the UI appear like um, more like normally in in the gameplay and stuff. Only appearing when you have the lantern equipped. Um, and then another thing I did was I changed the color because uh, col- changing the color was also decompiled. So I changed the color from like 
it turns out that the top half of the lantern meter and the bottom half of the lantern meter are actually two separate colors. I, I think in the game, the developers m may have used the same exact color for the bottom half and the top half, but uh, you can actually make make them different colors. So I made the top half look more like, if I recall correct, like on a dark purplish, and then I think or or maybe like light pinkish, and then the the bottom half I made it more like d dark uh, purple, I guess. Uh, the reason why I made the specific color choice was because that's how the link between worlds meter looked like, like from the bottom and the top. So I want to try to resemble it as much as possible. And I think I did a pretty good job. I think when you guys compare the colors of them, you'll see a very major similarity between them. So yeah, um, so after I made like some UI modifications, stuff like that, um, I then start to work on basically like, the first actual like gameplay modification for the meter mod and uh, I made it oh, since the lantern meter well obviously uses the lantern I decided to start with that make the lantern like uh, work at least a little differently so um, at first I ran into some troubles like for example the meter depleted the lantern meter then deplete and uh, sometimes it deplete too fast etc uh, eventually I figured it out and uh, I made it so it only like it depletes not too slowly like how it does in the original games because you want it to deplete quite fast um, for like the strategy and stuff like that in my opinion so I um, I managed to get it to like how I want it and like when, when it runs out the la the lantern itself also runs out so that was like the first item I modified the second item that I adjusted for the energy meter the custom energy meter basically I'm gonna call it an energy meter now. It's a lantern meter, but I'm just gonna call it the energy meter now. So um, the second item that I adjusted was uh, magic. The you know the armor they get like from Mallow March Castle Town um, shop, and yeah, I mean um, it wasn't. I don't think it was probably that hard to make it uh, to make the meter lower the meter value lower when you like the energy of the meter lower when you wear the armor. The hard part though was the armor was trying to make it not uh, reduce rupees when wearing it because um, because the code the the code for the function that contains uh, like the, the function that contains the code for the armor reducing rupee amount when you wear it isn't fully decompiled as far as I'm aware at least in, with their version of the repository I have from April 1st uh, and so, um, so, so I had to, so instead of, uh, like, it, it, parts of it were decompiled, but I didn't want to risk modifying those parts, and then the other parts that were not decompiled, they would get messed up. I didn't want to risk that, because that was a huge function, it wasn't just for the, uh, for the armor and stuff. So, so instead of doing that, someone suggested, or maybe I, I just, uh, I, I suggested, like, is it possible to modify modify the function using the ASM version, like a modify the ASM version. And it, I mean, it is possible technically, but is it like realistically possible? Like, uh, you know, it's like next to impossible. So um, what I end up doing instead, uh, someone at, like SyncTalker recommended me to, um, to add like uh, in one of the lines of the ASM version of the function, they told me, I think it's the ASM version, they told me to um, replace the whatever was written there was nope like N O P, and that apparently like that that fixed it that made the armor not um, not remove the rupees. Um, I, I think what N O P does from what I understand like it makes this thing empty like the line or whatever, so it makes it zeros or something which doesn't which as far as I am aware it doesn't do anything. I'm not that big an ASM at all, so you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, anyway, so after I did that, I, um, I I got it so the armor doesn't reduce rupees when I'm wearing it, and but it still reduces the meter, um, which is why I wanted. But it turns out that when I get hit by an enemy, the armor reduces uh, energy from the meter. I mean, it, I mean, it no, it doesn't reduce when I get hit by an enemy, but uh, I think, but it it does. Um, 
it does reduce rupees when I get hit by an enemy and uh, I wasn't able to find the line and the function that had uh, that had the code for reducing 10 I think it was 10 rupees when you get hit by an enemy while wearing the magic or while wearing like the armor so because of that I because of that when you get hit by an enemy in the game you will still lose rupees but if you're wearing the armor without getting hit um, you, you won't lose rupees so there's that um, also even though you lose rupees I made it so if the rupee amount that you have is less than is less than uh, I think it was two or one I think it's less than one if it's less than one then you have two rupees so that way it's like so that way you can never get zero rupees which is I guess mostly good and bad thing because if you like it makes it so it's I guess it's slightly easier to make money which is technically a bad thing in a way but um just cheating guess but at the same time it's like it's like it's worth it in my opinion because uh it fixes some issues with the uh, armor when it reaches zero. So in instead of risking that, I just made it so it always stays basically like one or above or two or above for the rupee amount. Anyways, uh, after I did the armor, or while I was doing it, I uh, I worked on I believe it was the bow. Like I, I worked on the bow and arrow, I think. And um, yeah, with the bow and arrow, uh, I had some issues with. Um, Whenever I shoot the arrow, because in in Link Between Worlds, when you use the bow and arrow, um, when you shoot the arrow, the me the energy of the meter decreases, it depletes, right? It, like, it, not completely the first time you use it when it's full, but um, it will deplete, and then you have to, and then after like a few seconds or, I don't even know if it's a second, like after like on a second or two or maybe half a second, it starts to gain again the meter, it starts to replenish. And so I was like, and so I had a problem with that because uh, every time you use the meter, since I already had the, every time you use the bow and arrow, since I already had the meter replenished automatically beforehand, um, when I used the bow and arrow, it co and made the meter constantly replenish, like immediately. So it made it so it's extremely, so it, it made it so it's in essentially impossible to run out of arrows, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Because, you know, it's in Link Between Worlds when you run out of the energy, you run out of uh, arrows, um, if I recall correctly. So, um, because of that, I had to um, I had to figure out how to make like, a timer. And this, I think that was the first time I created a timer. I, I don't remember that because it's been months. Like, I started this in March or April 1st, I think. And I just, like, finished it, like, a few days ago or a day ago, basically. Um, like, for the first release, anyways. So, um, I, but I think it was with the bowl I was working on this, I first created the uh, timer variable. And timer variables, I end up using them a lot throughout the project, by the way. But that was, like, I think my first experience using the timer variable and uh, 12 points decompilation for, like, a mod. So, um, so yeah, the, the way the timer variable works is, um, so I create a Boolean variable and, uh, you know, at an integer variable like boolean integer and I make it so if the boolean is true then then the integer variable uh, adds one every frame uh, to itself adds one to itself every frame so it starts at zero but uh, when the boolean is true then the integer adds one to itself every frame and then once it reaches uh, like sometimes they make it once it reaches like 45 like a value of 45 integers or 20 or something um, I don't remember how much I made for the bow but uh, let's let's say for example I made it a value of 20 so when the integer va variable reached a value of 20 I made it so the integer variable um, would reach would become 0 again reset to 0 and the boolean variable uh, would reset to false because when it's true the integer variable adds 1 to itself so yeah, the boolean variable becomes uh, false, and then I made it so, um, like sometimes I would make it so another like function or variable would become true, etc., or would play when when uh, when that happens, when that if statement happens, where the timer variable reached a certain amount of value. So, anyways, that was like my first experience, and it worked really well. Um, so it made it so it made it so after I shot the arrow from the bow. 
it didn't immediately replenish because uh, it was uh, every frame it was adding one to itself and only after it reached for example 30 frame 30 value of 30 so 30 frames or whatever then uh, it would reset to like false the boolean variable and the integer would reset to zero and then it would start to replenish again the energy meter otherwise it, it won't replenish so um yeah that that worked nicely and basically it basically did what uh, link between worlds was able to do so i was happy about that i was pretty proud of, um, of the doing that um so and they end up using timer variables time and time again with this mod for multiple items um, I think after the bow, I worked on the bombs, and uh, with the bombs, I did a similar thing again, where every time I take out a bomb, uh, you the every time you take out a bomb, uh, the timer variable plays, and then after the timer runs out, then the energy replenishes. So when you take out the bomb, the meter gets consumed, right? So the energy of the meter gets consumed, and then there's a timer variable that plays, and it adds like one value to itself each frame, and then after it adds certain, and and after it reaches a certain value, then the boolean variable becomes false, and then the energy replenishes again. And so again, it like mimicked how it works in link between worlds, is essentially, and yeah, it worked nicely in my opinion. And uh, by the way, one more thing I want to mention about the bombs and the bow is that um, for both of them, I mean, um, no, for the bow, uh, each time you use it, it it takes out because the meter is essentially like it's kind of basically a value of the max value is like 21600 21600 uh, is the maximum value essentially um and so each time you take out um each time you use an arrow and the bow like regular arrow it would consume one force like like a quarter it would consume a quarter of the energy of the meter um, and the reason I did like this is because that's how it works in Link Between Worlds. Each time you use an arrow, it essentially consumes a quarter of the meat of the meter. I mean, I'm not sure if it actually consumes a quarter, but what I do know is if the meter is full in Link Between Worlds, and use you can if the meter is full and you don't use any other item, and only the bone arrow, you can use it four times. You can use the bone arrow four times before the meter depletes. So, so I I, I did the same thing here. So you can use it four times in the mod before it depletes uh, and the same thing with the bombs the bombs and link between worlds you can use them three times so so it consumes like um, I don't know like one out of three of the energy meter every time you use it so so if it's full you can use it three times before it runs out and so I, I did the same thing in the mod because that's how it was in link between worlds um, basically so um, yeah so so I I, may, I, may, I tried to make sure that that was like accurate and yeah it is accurate in the in this version of the mod like when you're gonna play it the, even in the first release. So um, that was the bow and the bombs and by the way with the bombs I remember running into so many like problems like staying days and maybe even weeks trying to like fix um, the problem with the bows with the bombs interacting with the it was the energy meter. Thankfully the eventually I was able to fix it. Um, but yeah, it took like, it, like because of that I ended up like not working on the mod for like months or even when I was working on the mod, it didn't make any like actual fruitful progress for like weeks maybe or something because of the, the bomb issue. So like uh, after the bomb, I started moving, I don't remember exactly what item I moved on, but I think, uh, I think after the bombs I went to work on the bumbling, but the bumbling, uh, if you guys read the GitHub, uh, in, in the GitHub, the bumbling, I don't think the, de the code the, for the bumbling, for like creating a bumbling, I mean, is decompiled yet. And because of that, uh, I, I made the bumbling constantly zero, like I have value of zero, which means, you ca which means at least as far as I, I know, um, as far as I know, you can't use the bumbling at any moment in the game. Maybe you can make a glitch happen then, or a specific moment that. I'm unaware of where you can use it, but uh, it's never intended to be used uh, because I can't figure out how to make interact with the meter properly. Uh, and the reason why I can't figure out how to do that is because probably because it's not decompiled yet, the code for bumbling um, interacting with the meter. So, so yeah, so the bumbling 
um, should be non-accessible, essentially. I mean, maybe, like, can probably buy it in the shop, in the game, but you won't be able to use it, um, as far as I know. So, um, so yeah, so that's a bumbling. And then uh, I moved on to, I think after that, I moved on to Spinner. Uh, not, not the Spinner, the Dominion Rod. Uh, the Dominion Rod was uh, one that I was kind of pretty excited about in a way, because I think, because... Um, the Dominion Rod, uh, like it, it can run out of energy. Like can, it's not because with the bow and arrow and with the bombs, they run out of energy. But you can get get like more arrows or more bombs stuff like that. And with the lantern, you can get like oil stuff like that if it runs out. With the Dominion Rod, it only ran out of energy as far as I remember from the original game. Um, after you leave the like the temple or dungeon or whatever, in the game after you finish it. Uh, or maybe even when you don't finish it, like after you leave it, and uh, but even then, like eventually you can replenish it like permanently when you go to a certain area, like um, when you talk to a certain like NPC, I think. So um, it took like a a while or a little bit or something for me to fix it, but uh, like there's uh, thankful I was, I was able to do it. Um, there's a Function I think it's called like check old century or something like that for Dominion Rod, um, and uh, I don't remember if this is the function that I'm thinking of for Dominion Rod, but because there's obviously multiple functions for like uh, for each item for the most part, um, but I think it was this one probably that made it so when he enters the Temple of Time, uh, the Dominion Rod will always be active, like the energy will always be like restored no matter what. So uh, I I modified it so then it won't um, so then it doesn't matter so then so then when you're in the dungeon it can be non um, non recovered if that makes sense it can be in the state where it's like red like it's, it doesn't have any energy so um, yeah so I modified that and then I also uh, I found the event bit and this was the first time I end up using event bits by the way and. Uh, in the mod, or even the, I think maybe in the completion in general, and uh, event bits, I guess I like, could, like from what I understand from my experience, they're basically like, um, like uh, I guess like flags in the game, like checkpoints, I guess like when you do a side quest and complete it, that's like an event bit that's completed, that's or even like when you do like a main mission, and you complete like uh, you get an item or like you get like. On as a bow and arrow from the second temple or dungeon, or the second like the Goron mines, then that's probably like a, an event bit itself or a or a stage bit, etc. Um, so anyways, uh, I use the event bit and I made it so so I use the event bit when you talk. I think the NPC to replenish the the minion rod so then the energy is back. Uh, and what I did was uh, I made it so. If the energy meter, like the lantern meter that I modified, basically, if the meter is uh, below a certain value, um, and you're using the rotor, and I don't remember exactly what I did, but if it's like under a certain value and stuff like that, um, then the the minion rod will um, will become like uh, the unrestored version, the one that doesn't have any energy in it, the red version, and then if it's above a certain value, it will become like you know energized again. And blue, um, and it was pretty fun. I was like, I was pretty happy. I think when I first got to work, because, yeah, like, cause that's not what the Dominion Rod functions. There's no ammo for the Dominion Rod as far as I can remember, anyways. Um, there's no stuff like that. So, so like making it utilize like a meter to gain and lose the energy was pretty cool. Um, so um, for the Dominion Rod. Uh, Every time you swing the rod, like when you throw the ball in it to like catch um, an object or whatever, um, uh, every time you do that, you lose like a part of the meter, but like part of the energy of the meter, but it's pretty small to be honest in, in general, um, that you lose. Um, but also, after you capture the object, it, the energy keeps re re reducing. Um, and when you use the attack button or whatever it's called, like the one where, like Link swings the rod while uh, after he catches the object, then um, that also consumes um, the the energy of the meter. Um, 
Yeah, after the Dominion Rod. Uh, oh yeah, and uh, I mean, I already I think I already mentioned this. Like when you, you know, if you keep using it uh, and the energy runs out, then or gets gets really close to running out, then it will, um, you know, the energy will diminish from the rod and it'll come red, etc. And it will come back again when it goes back to a certain value. Anyways, so uh, after the Dominion Rod, I worked on the spinner and uh, the spinner was basically like the last one they added the. Like the last main one that I added, like functionality for the meter, kind of. Um, or maybe, like, because yeah, I, I did try to add the meter functionality for other items like boomerang and uh, ball and chain, but I couldn't figure out a good way to make it so when the meter depletes, you won't be able to use them, so like that. So I end up taking that out of the code so the boomerang doesn't use the meter, doesn't consume it. The same thing as the ball and chain. But anyways, the spinner does consume it. Uh, initially, though, the, um, like now when you play it, the spinner only consumes it when, uh, if I recall correctly, when you uh, use the attack button, like when you press A, the one where, uh, you know, like the attack button, um, like the one where you can jump off walls and stuff like that, um, when it rails. And uh, so that consumes the meter, the energy of the meter. And also when you're in rails, like when you, you're on a rail, it consumes uh, <coughs> the energy. The thing is, um, before uh, I used to have it so, regardless if you're on a rail or not, it would consume the energy. But uh, I ran into a problem, and the problem is um, the problem. Do you guys know those like pits or whatever, like the holes in the ground where you have to like use the spinner to like constantly like spam A on it to open like a door or whatever? Like this, you only have to do that like what, like on the four times, five times maybe. During the entire game, as far as I remember, unless it's like side quests I'm unaware of, I think you even have to do it one time, like sit in the sky for some reason. But yeah, um, those, uh, be um, when the spinner rides on those, the the meter, since I originally had it, so the, the energy of the meter gets consumed even when you're not on the rails. That meant that when you're on this whole stuff and you're spamming A. The meter is still being consumed. It's not being consumed as if you're using the trigger attack, but it's still being consumed. And um, you, it's not, um, it's not going slow enough that you're able to open the door before the the energy of the meter is consumed fully. So, and since I can't find like a function or a event, but that the, that was clear to me or whatever that is involved for that could that could have been involved for uh, disabling the energy being consumed when uh, on uh, when on those one of those whole stuff or the pit stuff because I can't find that um, I end up making it I end up doing like basically a compromise and I end up removing the energy from being consumed when you're not on a rail but to be honest I mean when you're not on a rail so what you know you know what I'm saying do you know what I'm saying so so yeah so it only consumes when you're on a rail or when, or when you jump off like a rail for example um, yeah, uh, I also, by the way, um, I also want to note down that the amount of energy that's consumed from the spinner when you're on the when you're on the in the boss room of the Arbiter's ground, it consumes it much more slowly, so you have more time to do the boss fight. Like the doesn't consume as much as it does when you're not in the boss room, and the reason why I did this is because uh, if I didn't do it that way, it would have been impossible or near impossible to like normally complete that boss fight if that makes sense so i had to um i had to like make like an f statement w where uh, i think it was an f statement where if you're in, in that boss room uh, it checks like the boss room or whatever and if, you, if you're in there then uh, the meter doesn't use as much uh, energy for in this when you use the spinner um, and doing that made the boss beatable, but still, still challenging. You still have to be like on your feet because uh, otherwise, uh, it will run out. So you still have to actually be careful. You still have to like, kind of like strategize, I guess, stuff like that. Um, so there's that. But it is, it should be beatable now, now unless like there's some weird locks that I'm unaware of. So yeah. Um, what else? Um, also, I adjusted initially um, the when the oxygen meter appeared, like when you're underwater and you're not wearing the Zoro armor or whatever. Um, initially, 
when the oxygen meter appeared, the lantern meter, which is the energy meter by now because in the mod, um, would disappear. Um, I modified that so I moved the oxygen meter's UI like uh, on like 12 values in the Y position down so then uh, it wouldn't like block the lantern meter and I made it so it appears so it, so it can appear when the lantern meter is is, uh, is on screen um, so that way so when you play the mod and you're underwater and you're not wearing Zora armor you might notice that there's two meters one is the oxygen meter with the blue one or whatever and the other one is a lantern meter, which is the energy meter for the mod. So yeah, I just want to uh, note that down. I don't think I wrote that in GitHub or even showed any screenshots, but yeah, that's an uh, interesting like fact that I want to share with you guys. Um, also, uh, I just want to share like on some last things, I guess. Um, so that's was that part for the mod. Um, what else is there that I want to say? Oh yeah, I want to talk about the quick toggle. For the armor, um, for the clothes, so um, uh, I went to since the um, since the armor instead of consuming rupees for the most part, anyways, it consumes uh, energy meter, the lantern meter, etc. I wanted to uh, make it so you can toggle between the armor and the kokiri clothes. Uh, in the game files, they called kokiri, but it's probably not called kokiri like canon canon story or whatever. Anyways, I'm going to call it kokiri. Um, I wanted to make a toggle, like a quick toggle, between the armor and the Kokiri clothes, but um, while I was working on that, uh, look, after I did that and I showed it, um, someone suggested to me that I should, uh, that I should um, add like sound effect. So I add the sound effect, and yeah, I agree. It made it more, uh, like the feature more immersive, I guess, in my opinion. Um, and then after I add that, they asked about like, um, they asked uh, about the Zora armor that I should also be able to have it toggleable with the Zora armor. Now initially I did this. I don't, the reason why I even did this quick toggle was saying you can toggle between the arm, the armor, the energy armor, and the Kokiri clothes. So then, so then you won't have to constantly go to, to the start menu when you want to take it off because it could get redundant. But uh, since they recommended the Zora armor, I did that, and it was uh, a bit hard to figure out, but I eventually figured it out, and yeah, the Zora armor works pretty nicely, honestly. Uh, I think it, yeah, I think it, it works, like, great with the toggle. Um, so, uh, but uh, one thing I have to mention, uh, I should mention, though, about that is if you want to use the armor, uh, if you want to toggle between the armor or the, the energy armor or the Zora armor, you have to first unlock them. So, in order to even do the toggle at all, you have to unlock the Zora armor first, and then you can do the toggle between Zora armor and the Kokiri. And then, if you want to toggle with the uh, energy armor, you have to unlock that one too. Um, and then you can toggle with you know all three of them. Uh, with the energy armor, you have to click D-pad down uh, twice. And the reason why I chose D-pad down, by the way, was because um, D-pad down. Uh, does the same thing as D-pad up, at least when you're on the gameplay screen, like when you're in the main gameplay. It, it, D-pad down just opens items menu screen, so I made it instead uh, open up the the thing, the, the it may, made it toggle, uh, toggle uh, button. Um, the last thing I want to mention, like the last main thing I want to mention before I guess I stop this is, um, I, uh, what was I gonna say? Yeah, the when you start a new game, you might notice that the meter is like extremely short, like the scale of it or whatever, and that there that's empty. And normally, when you start a new game in Twilight Princess, you're supposed to have uh, the first item that you get, if I remember correctly, is a slingshot. And uh, the thing with the slingshot is. It's also part of the mod. I don't think I even mentioned it, to be honest. But the, the slingshot does the same thing as the bow and arrow, essentially, for the most part. Like, it consumes a quarter of the energy meter when you use it, etc. But, um, yeah, this, the, the thing with the slingshot is you the okay, you unlock it before you unlock the lantern, in, normally in the game, anyways. But, 
the meter doesn't work unless you ha unless you unlock the lantern so so I made it so the lantern appears so that means so when that means when you first get the slingshot um it would be completely empty and there's no way for you to like actually refill it basically so uh, to work around that I made it so I modified like the map data for the Ordon spring and uh I added like a chest, the, the chest already added, I mean, you might not, uh, when you look at the chest, it's in the same position and stuff as the when, as um, the chest in the video for 12 Prince HD that I released in September, I think it was September of 2022, uh, when you add like custom actor placement, because and that's because it is the same uh, chest, um, I just went to add this feature quickly because I was like running out of time or stuff, like the, I, I running out of like the deadline that I set for myself. So I went ahead and uh, used that custom actor and they uh, removed the enemies because and if you check that video out, the custom actor placement video, um, I had some enemies in there, I removed them uh, um, and uh, you know, I had the necessary modifications, the, I think I had all of them hopefully. And then I also made the chest contain the lantern um, and uh, yeah, so you get the lantern, you can get the lantern as soon as you start the game, as soon as you start, you're able to move. Uh, you just go to Ordon Spring and you get it, and then you should be able to have it. Uh, if you run into any issues with that, like, you can send me, contact me in some way in YouTube comments or in the GitHub uh, repo by, playing, by writing an issue or whatever, um, and tell me about it. Uh, or if you run into any issues, anything else in the mod. Um, and speaking of issues, there is actually one issue, and they mentioned this in GitHub even. Uh, when you use the hookshot, I, I'm not sure why, and they only found out about this like yesterday, I think, uh, at the time I'm recording this, it's uh, my voice right now, it's time recording the, this recording, so um, it turns out when you use the hookshot and you hang on a ceiling, uh, the game makes you like void out or whatever and spawn, respawn back, which is odd, um, I had to modify it, so... So the um, no, I didn't modify it. I didn't. I didn't because I didn't know what the cause was, and they already like prepared the mod by the time we found out about this. So yeah, so that this basically means that you probably can't complete Lake Bed Temple uh, and uh, sit in the sky at least normally with the mod. So you you might have to like switch back between the mod and the original game when you're doing those two specific areas in the game: the sit in the sky and uh, Lake Bed. Because they use the hookshot a lot and you hookshot the ceiling uh, a lot, at least in sitting in the sky. I don't, I don't remember how many times you do it in Lakewood Temple, but yeah, um, I uh, I did modify. Um, so, yeah, so you're going to run into issues uh, close shot basically. And um, one thing I'm not sure of is if you hang on a wall, I'm not sure if that will also make the game void out and respawn you. Or not, I didn't test it out, or maybe I tested it out and I forgot, but what I do know is if you hang from the ceiling, that'll happen. So you'll also run into issues in, in Hyrule Castle, unfortunately, and stuff like that, so... Yeah, I, I might fix it in the future if the mod becomes popular enough. Uh, you guys can, you know, it, you know, if it gets popular enough and shared enough, then, I'll, you know, I'll probably consider it. And also, if I you know, release the second version, I'll probably add extra, extra content, like, I'll probably make the claw shot itself and the ball and chain and the boomerang also consume the meter but that, that depends on like the success of the mod so um yeah the, or that mainly depends on the success of the mod uh i guess like the last thing i i want to mention it's not really that necessary it's, and i don't think you'll really run into it that much um it's some issues that you might you might you might not but you might experience as a ball uh so when you use the bow, bomb and arrow, bomb arrows, when you use the bomb arrows for the bow, um, how do I explain? So, when you use the bomb arrows for the bow, it, uh, it consumes, um, it consumes, like, I, I, the way I made it use up the, the way I made it use up the energy meter was, was I, I added how much, uh, one arrow would consume from the energy meter, which is, 5400 or was it 400? like 5400 I don't know 5400 I'm not that sure 
um, that uh, and they add that with how much one bomb would consume from the meter, the energy meter, which is 7200 or 7000, like 7200. So I add those together and they got the value of 12, 12600, like 12600. So um, I made that the amount that you that that uh, gets consumed from the energy meter each time you use a bomb arrow. And the thing is, when you have the bomb arrow equipped, the game makes it so you can toggle between the bomb arrow and the regular arrows. Now I did make it so when you press R and you toggle between bomb arrow and regular arrows, it does actually toggle and uh, w like when you toggle that, it only consumes like, it consumes the appropriate amount that it would consume normally for the regular arrows. The issue is if you press the R button in certain moments, when you're not in first person mode, it can, it can make it so then, so then the regular arrows, for example, use use one twelve six hundred uh, energy from the meter, while um, while the bomb arrows only use fifty four hundred, which is not accurate because the bomb arrows are supposed to use twelve six hundred. And yeah, so but you're probably not gonna you're probably barely going to run to like you might run to it. I don't know, maybe even once. I mean, first of all, it depends on how much you're gonna use bomb arrows, and second of all, even if you use a lot, like again, it depends like. If you're, are you gonna toggle, are you gonna press the R button when you're not in first person mode uh, while you use the bombers? So yeah, um, so that's like a minor issue. Another issue with the bow is, um, is uh, sometimes when you use it, when it's, uh, it's hard to explain, but sometimes when you use it, uh, it will use an arrow without consuming meter. But again, this is like very tight, like, you have to use it when the meter, when the value of the energy meter is at like a very specific value or around a very specific value. If you use it at that specific moment, like, like if you use if you if you use that specific moment, then point consumes the meter. But you have to be like extremely, extremely, like tight. It has to be like an extremely tight position. Like you, you essentially, you most of the time you're gonna have to have, you're probably gonna have to have been doing it on purpose to make it not consume the meter. The energy otherwise it will like basically it will guarantee consume the energy um so yeah i want to mention that uh i guess that's it uh please enjoy the mod um i there's a i have a text tutorial um in the zip folder of the mod uh, for how to use it um i also put a link to a, a website that uh, like that has a patcher to, to patch because the, the files are not i saw their patch files and you have to have your own ISO. There's an end kit and there's a regular ISO, depending on your version. If you use a regular ISO and doesn't work, what you can do is um, you can you can download the end kit partition or whatever it's called, the recovery thing. And then you can even if you have a regular ISO, you can recover it in ISO again. And then that version that recovers ISO should work with uh, with uh, you know the the ISO patch. Not the anchor, the ISO patch um, of the mod. Also, disable all the cheats when you're playing. Disable cheats because if you don't disable them, they will, they will, be, I guess, like basically collide with the uh, modified source code and, and they will cause crashes to happen unnecessary times in the game. Um, I think, like, so disable all the cheats. So, like, if you have a moon drop cheat or speed modifier or whatever make sure to disable everything uh, including chiral field speed hack by the way that's also a cheat technically i mean it's a yeah j so disable that and yeah that's all i have to say thank you guys for watching um and if you reached the end thank you and bye